Alright, it's time for another math. Easy. So let's try to discuss basically introduction to the area problem or finding the area under the curve. And this will preclude to my integral calculus videos and I'll base a lot of that on the vi the ideas that I uh, discussed in this video. So now let's say you had a function like this y equals uh, f of x in this case here and, and you were asked to solve what the area under this or basically what is the area un under this or how is it defined actually this is a better question. And actually, what is the area? So if this is x equals a, so the area under this curve. And, and now, basically, uh, in this, I'm going to discuss how we go about actually defining what this area means, because it's not a really simple shape here. This is a curve that we don't really know the value. Even if we did, it's just hard finding the area. Because if we had a rectangle here, this is uh, length, this is width, then the area is going to be equal to l times w, a length times width. That's this area across. And if you had a just simple shape, another one like a triangle in this case, the height of this was h, this base length is b, then the area is equal to base times height divided by 2. We're all used to that one there. See video link on the proof of this on my in the info link below. And also, um, if you had a more complex shape like a polygon in this case, you could just break it up into uh, three areas or whatever, however many you, you you can so a three so then the area is going to be three triangles so area is just equal to one plus two plus three and those are all triangles there so you'd find separately so we're going to actually take some of these ideas and basically get this kind of um, it just just find out how we could get the approximation for this area and then we'll see that when using limits we could actually get the exact area so the uh, another idea that we're gonna dis use in this discussion is uh, how we went about deriving the derivative of our tangent line. So if you had a function like this, this is f of x here, and we want to know what the tangent line is at this point here. Uh, so what we did do is basically look at a secant line or a line between two points here, and then as you get closer and closer uh, towards this line, or infinitely small, you're gonna see that. If, as you go closer, you go from here to there, and then as you keep going, you're going to get finally across, you're going to have a tangent line across here. Versus, yeah, so you start off with a secant line, you get closer and closer, you get finally a tangent. So what we're doing is f taking the limit. So we're going to do a similar method than, uh, with this and applying simple shapes. In this case, we're just going to sum up actually a bunch of rectangles here. So now to illustrate through this concept is basically uh, do, do an example on this. Basically approximate the area under y equals x squared curve using four rectangles from basically this domain 0 uh, to, to 1 here, where x is 0 to 1. So if you were to graph this y equals x squared line here, so it, what you can see, so basically what we could do is uh, first let's break up this into four sections here. The exact area would be, if you break it up to four, have something like this here, and four even ones is going to be 0.25. Uh, this is 0.25. All these are 0.25 lengths because you're just going to be 1 divided by 4 or equals to 1 divided by 4. We'll just write that down instead. So as you can see in, in this case here, if we call this S1, this is S2, this is S3, and this is S4 here, this is the exact area. This is a summation of these. But now we're going to approximate these with rectangles. So this will just go is approximately equal to, well, it's not really because we're not using that much rectangles, but let's just bear with me. So now if we just yeah, just draw, draw this curve here, now we have four rectangles here spaced at basically this is 1 over 4. And this is last one here too, this is 1 over 4 here. And and uh, so you can see this approximation, if this is the exact area, we'll just call this all of it A is equal to the summation of S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4 here, then this then this uh, area here, or we'll call this R4, because we're using from the right side. I'll show you how you could also do it from the left side. But if this is R4, this is going to be greater than A, because it's you can clearly see it's greater than A, and because uh, it's over this, this curve, this f of x curve. And as you see, each rectangle, the height, you know the height, because this is on the f of x line. So we go wherever x value is. In this case, it's 1, so we're going to have 1 squared. In this case here, we are... Uh, yeah, so the, each rectangle is going to be the width times the height here, and this this one's going to be well 0 0.75 times it by oh, it squared here. So then this area in this one we'll call this R4. I'll just write it down here. This is just going to be equal to well the width one over four times it by and whatever the x value is. In this case, it's going to be one over four 
uh, cubed, I mean, squared, I mean. And then do this for every single one, so it's going to be 1 over 4 squared, plus 1 over 4, and then we, we keep shifting, so we keep shifting by 1 over 4, so we add 1 over 4, so we're going to have 2 over 4 squared, plus 1 over 4, this is going to be 3 over 4, yeah, times, uh, I mean, plus this last one, your 4 over 4, or 1 here, if we sum this all up, we'll just simplify it first, yeah, just take the 1 over 4 out, then you're going to have the summation of all these squares here. Now, if we plug this in the Google Calculator, what do you have, this, this far here, uh, squared here, so 1 over 4 times 0.25 squared plus 0.5.75 squared equals, well, just enter, and we get this uh, this value 0.46875. Yeah, and I just write it down here. So 0 0.48, 0 0.46875. This has to be greater than the actual area here. So now we call this Rn because we went from the right side here. But let's say we went from the left side in making the rectangles. What do I mean by that? I'll just draw it here. So now if we went from the left side actually instead of the right side here, so we're going from the zero. Uh, this this is one rectangle. The height zero so is going to be zero. This is going to be again. This length is going to be one over four like always. And now we're going to go from here to this side, to from here to here. So we'll call this L4, and this is actually has to be less than A because you have a lot of these missing areas you're not, you're not actually solving for. So, and in fact, this is just a shift of the Rn. So all we're doing is shifting it this way, and we're just excluding this last point here. So L4 is just actually equal to R4 minus the last uh, number here. So minus in this case, it's going to be whatever n is times it by uh, 1 squared here. The reason I have n here, because uh, if, yeah, this is r4, so n is 4, so we'll just put it 1 over 4 here. So 1 over 4, so all we do is subtract this last one here. So now, uh, in, let's see what happens if when you get greater than, or let's just first solve this value actually first here. So this one, uh, let's go l4, this just equals to, well, this is 0 plus 1 over 4, times 1 over 4 squared because that's this height here plus 1 over 4 times 2 over 4 squared yeah, times uh, then 1 over 4 th times 3 over 4 squared. And as you can see uh, all we're doing is missing this last piece here. So we're subtracting it. this one here and that's actually just 0 0.5, 0 .0, 0 0.25. So we just put this this subtracted by 0 0.25 is equal to, well let's just uh, put it in here actually, minus 0 0.25, that's what it should be. That's point. 21875. Yeah, so we get this value here. And then if now as you can see this one has to be less than the actual a. So now we have a range for this a the actual area. So a is e is greater than 0.21875 and it's going to be less than r4 which is 0.46875. 46. Yeah, so it's less than this one. This this range now as you can see when we get bigger uh, rectangles we're going to have actually a closer area here yeah, and in fact if we took more rectangles in this case I just took a photo from my calculus book n equals 30 here as you can see if for this is r30 because we're going from the right side so it's greater than than a here but as you can see it's getting closer and closer to it because you have less less error here this is much less than having this uh, giant missing piece here so now I have an, actually an Excel sheet I'll just show you that gets even more and more close. Yes, if I just drag this in here, basically this I made this Excel sheet that you could uh, also download in the video in the info link below in the, the Dropbox link in the info below. Basically, uh, I have one here. So just sum up if you have n equals five rectangles, then delta x or the width is just going to be well one divided by five or one divided by n. So in this case here, one divided by c six there. And then, as you can see, this is each rectangle here. This is each x value because you just have to add delta x to every single one here. And then this, we get here, we just sum up each rectangle. And then the difference between ln and rn is just going to be uh, this one. Uh, the ln subtracts the last value because, uh, like I showed in the what I wrote before. And then the rn, as you can see, this one is just a total sum of these rectangles here. And, and this one here, so you, this range is pretty broad, is actually a point 0.2 difference. And, but then if you went to, uh, this one's N10, you could even change it, let's go, I mean, N11, you could change it, N10 is all changes. Let's just delete this, delete rows, and this is, uh, this is minus this last point. So I'm, this is a quick way to show you, just delete that, minus this. Yeah, so we have this difference here. So that's all this one is. Uh, you could download and play around with this one. You can make it more or less. 
uh, than N10. So as you see, it's getting closer and closer together, and it's going closer to actually 0.33. You go to N equals to 100. We scroll down here. So there's 100 rectangles, so we have this 0.33. It's getting closer and closer. And then if we go to 1,000, this one's actually 1,000, we're getting really, really close. And that's basically from this image. You can see, if, imagine you had 1,000 rectangles, you're going to have a much smaller area. I mean, an error, error. You're going to have a much more accurate representation. So now this brings me to basically the limit. Find what this limit is. If we had actually... Um, and an oh no, infinite amount of rectangles here. So this is what the area is actually. So this is actually the area under the y equals x squared curve. So to get, to do this one, this is one we're going to apply the summation rules that I showed in my earlier videos, uh, a bunch of summation rules and formulas, and using sigma notation. Okay, so now if we graph this uh, y equals x squared curve again, and then if we just draw n rectangles, this is going to be an infinite amount of rectangles here. So uh, we, we always go from the right side, this is Rn in this case. So, and then every single width, like, uh, because it, the width depends on how much rectangles are. If you have two, you're going to have 0.5 width. So this one's going to be, well, n of them is 1 divided by n. If it was 4, it would be 1 over 4. So every single width is 1 over 4 here, and then the x, the height of every single one, because this is last one's going to be, uh, yeah, this last one, the height's going to be whatever Oh, well, whatever the x value is. So in this case here, uh, x is just going to be equal to 1 over n. This is like 1 over 4. I'll just remove that. Yeah, just 1 over n, not 1 over 4. So then the the actual uh, x distance here, just from, from this one here, it, it will just depend on whatever this value is here. So we'll, if you have this, if, let's call this 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n. This is the nth rectangle there. This is a 4. I don't know why it touched like that. So basically, we're going to have this is just going to be the x value in this case is going to be whatever n is times it by 1 over n because that's the distance from each one here. So this is 2 1 over n. So this x is equal to 2 over n here. This one is going to be equal to 4 over n and etc. All the way up to here, this one is going to be equal to x equals to n over n which equals 1 which makes sense. So now let's just write this down in a, in a summation form. So we have r of n is just equal to, well, 1 over n, this is the first one, times it by 1 over n squared, because that's the height. The height is dependent on whatever the x value is. Now we're going to have a plus 1 over n. The width is always going to be 1 over n. Now we're going to have 2 over n squared plus, again, this is 1 over n, 3 over n squared, and then plus, etc plus all the way up to 1 over n. It's going to be n over n squared here. And this is this cancels 1 here. Now, to, to simplify this out, you can see that there's a 1 over n in every single one. And also, there's a 1 over n squared in every single one. The only thing changing is this 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n. So we can just take this out. It's going to be rn is equal to 1 over n cubed times it by, well now it's going to be 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared etc all the way up to n squared and is, and this is just a sum of squares which I showed in my sum in my summation video you see in the video link below so rn is going to be equal to 1 over n 3 times it by n times this is the formula for this you can see the proof for this in the video link below this is going to be n plus 1 times by 2n plus plus 1 here all squared here because this one right here, this just equals to in, in sigma notation form i squared uh, i is equal to 1 initially up to n. And this just equals 1 squared plus 2 squared, etc., all the way to n squared. So that's, a, that's what this is, and this is the formula for it. So you can see the video link for proof of this. So now we could do the limit of it. So the limit, yeah, we have this limit now of uh, just a simple one. We could actually find the limit of this one of this 1 over n cubed and, and, and etc. So we'll, to do this, let's just simplify this a bit further. Let's take the 6 out, just the constant. We have 1 over 6 here. It's going to be out of there, so limit and approaches infinity. Let's just break this up. There's three separate functions here, n, n plus 1, 2, n plus 1, divided by all. Let's just separate this one. So we're going to have an n over n times by n plus 1 over n times it by 2n plus 1 over n here and this this multiplied at the bottom here is going to be n cubed there so now we could just cancel out what we can 
So limit and approach infinity. This is going to be now 1 times it by this. Divide this out. We're going to have 1 plus 1 over n. Divide it out on each one. This, now we're going to have 2 plus 1 over n here. The n's cancel in this case. N's cancel. And the n's cancel in this. So now we just put, as you can see, when this goes to infinity, the only thing that's going to be changing is the n's here. This is going to be 1 over infinity. It approaches 0. As, same with this one here. So then the limit is just going to equal to 1 over 6, well, times 1, times 1 plus 0, times 2 plus 0. And this just equal, only thing matters is a 2 there. So we have 2 over 6. This equals 2, 1 over 3. And, and, and putting a calculator, 1 over 3 is approximately just 0 0.333, etc., all the way. So this is 1 over 3 here, and that's what I was approximating using a bunch of rectangles up to 1,000 here. So well, yeah, it's so basically using the summation rules and then taking the limit of infinite amount of rectangles, same way as the tangent getting a limit as closer and closer to the tangent line uh, x value, we get we actually get the area in this case. So this is the area. This is actually defined as the area under the, in this case here uh, y equals x squared curve. So area under a curve here. This is from zero to uh, zero. Yeah, all the way up to one here. So yeah, this is basically, uh, this is, a, yeah, using limits and stuff, we can actually calculate and define this area here. So we have this area here, it's it's going to be 0.33, and in fact, it should be 0.33, because you can see, if this is 1 here, 1 squared is equal to 1, and this is, if you just look at the area of a square, 1 times 1 is equal to 1, so it has to be less than, so area of this has to be less than 1 here. And also half of the square is going to be something like this because it's curved down. So it also has to be less than 1 over 2. And it's, yeah, it should be 1 over 3. Yeah, so it's actually, yeah, it goes to 1 over 3 here. Well, that's all for today. You can download these notes and also the Excel sheet if you want to play around with it in the, in the Dropbox link below in the info. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned about area. Now we're going to use these ideas to more formalize the definition of area in my integral calculus videos later on. Well, that's all for you. If you learn and stay tuned for another math easy solution.